Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next episode of Rethinking Materials. In episode two, we're going to be talking about biodegradable and compostable art supplies, things that you can find on the ground, in the trees, and in your kitchen with me, Corinne Loprofito. We're going to be talking about compostable confetti, how to turn fruit into beads, and how to transform shells and flowers and other things that are naturally occurring into beautiful artistic compositions. To start, I'm going to show you how I take these supplies and turn them into a headpiece. A lot of this stuff was dried out over my wood stove in the winter, but you could also use a dehydrator if you had that. And then I came in with some beads that were made out of bone, stone, some fruit seeds, stuff like that. And then by taking a piece of cardboard and a plier stapler, you can really make some extremely interesting stuff. So I like to have a drill with me sometimes. You don't want to poke through. You want to drill through if the fruit got hard or if you have like a wooden bead or something. So just to make a hole in something and turning it into a bead, that way you can sew it with the embroidery floss and some things like leaves that are more thin and flexible, you can use the plier stapler for that. And so all I'm doing here is sewing on a bunch of different pieces to get started. And then at about halfway, here's where it is. So you can see some of the staples and you can see some of the thread, but I really don't mind it. And I still think that we're off to a good start. So to add a little bit more dimension to it, I just rolled and folded another piece of cardboard and then sewed on all these dried out lemon tops on it. And so that's going to give me more texture. You can see here that I've cut the lemons in different ways and dried them out and oranges and avocados as well. And adding in some leaves and beads, I think that it's definitely coming along. So another tip using this same kind of fruit stuff is that if you wanted to make a kind of square bead, you could dry out, this is a grapefruit here, and then taking an awl, you just have your little square and your awl, which you're gonna use to poke through it, put a hole in it and maybe you want to like push it kind of hard on the wood so you don't hurt your finger and then boom bead so on the back of the headpiece you can see all the thread poking through and all the staples and that can kind of scratch you so what I do is just take other pieces of cardboard and put them on top of it and have the staples facing the other way so that the smooth side is hitting my forehead and then to make it into a wearable piece I had just a scrap piece of fabric and I used the stapler to attach that so now you can see what it looks like when you put it on. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. This is my first time making a headpiece quite like this. And so obviously, you know, there's going to be room for improvement and people are going to have different ideas. But also I wanted to show how I use the same techniques to make this necklace. So with the cardboard, you want to make sure if you want your thing to be compostable afterwards that you take off any tape and only use uncoated cardboard, nothing glossy. And what I did here is just wrote out some words on the cardboard and then took my embroidery floss and needle, sewed through that, took more of the dried lemon tops, sewed those on and some corn, some dried corn pieces, and added on a few shells using some jump rings and metal that I would take off before I put this thing in the compost. So here you can see a better detail of the necklace. Another one of my favorite supplies to use are flowers left over from weddings. Why buy things new when I could use things that were already existing and were gonna go to the landfill anyway? So here's another example of that, and another one where I used some paper egg crates that were already dyed that color. So, you know, there's a lot of opportunities to use all different kinds of materials. And if you were going to be going to a party or a parade, well, hey, maybe you wanna bring some confetti to throw too. So here's some of my favorite examples. In addition to wearable things, something that I like to make that has no commercial value, you can't wear it, it's very ephemeral, they are called earth mandalas. And it's just simply laying down beautiful objects on the earth and then letting it disappear, evolve, and you know, just go back to the earth where it came from. No waste, and they look so beautiful, they're so fun to make. Here's a few examples of ones that I've made in the forest using materials that I gathered just from an arm's reach away, and sometimes I bring in other things like oyster shells that I have left over from meals that I ate. 
So in order to do that, all I do is soak them in a bucket of hot soapy water and have a little kind of metal scrub brush just to get off any of the extra stuff so they don't get stinky and covered in bugs. And then also I like to walk around the neighborhood and just observe the seasons, see what flowers are blooming. And as people are doing this, they're gonna notice how beautiful and colorful the earth is without any artificial pigments or hot glue or all of these things that we're accustomed to using. And even though things don't last forever, I think that using the beauty of nature and observing the seasons is such a profound practice to bring into art making. So here's an example of an earth mandala that I made using flowers that were within a one block radius of my house that had fallen on the ground. It was spring, there were all these things. And you know, it's really fun to take an area that was otherwise abandoned or neglected and just add a few little things around for people to see when they pass by and you don't have to clean it up after. You can just let it absorb back into the earth and you can see here how, you know, I took pictures of as time went by, it's gonna change, things are gonna blow away, you're gonna add more and let that ephemeral nature be a part of the practice of the art making. So I hope that this has inspired people to look around and ethically harvest things that are in their area to integrate more natural materials into their art making practice. Thank you guys so much for following along. And if you're interested to know more about my work, you can check out my Patreon, Instagram, or website. See you next time.